and Surrey for the first of three programmes to find Britain's strongest man. And into the arena come the eight modern gladiators who'll be battling for our title. From Glasgow, power lifter Ray Noble. From Surrey, lorry driver Tosha Killingback. From London, weightlifter Andy Drobietsky. From Aberdeen, Highland Games ace Bill Anderson. From Leicestershire, hammer thrower Jim Whitehead. From Dundee, another Highland Games pro, Grant Anderson. From Birmingham, all-in wrestler Big Pat Roach. From Huntington, shot putter Jeff Cates. And circus strongman Gunga Din showing us some of his speciality as well. More than 2,000 pounds of flesh and muscle. And amongst it all, shy Barbara Windsor. Now, throughout history, man has been fascinated by great feats of strength. Samson, blinded by the Philistines, toppled the pillars of their temple. Milo, the hero of ancient Greece, six times Olympic wrestling champion. Thomas Tuffham, 18th century London public and made a harness lift of 1,800 pounds. The American Eugene Sandoz, feats of strength, startled the world 80 years ago. And his compatriot Jack Walsh recently lifted a baby elephant. Well, of course, as sport became more specialized, it became even more difficult to compare fellows of different strengths. I mean, how could you compare a weightlifter with a wrestler or a shot putter with a hammer thrower? We've devised a whole series of different strength tests to decide just that over the next three weeks. Tests like these. Now, the rules of the competition are very simple indeed. We have 11 events in all for our eight strong men to compete in. And the winner of each event seven for second, four for third, two for fourth, and one for fifth. Now, at the end of 11 events, the four leaders in points will then compete in a tug of war, and points for that last event will be doubled. Ensuring fair play, our overall referee, Oscar State, former General Secretary of the International Weightlifting Federation. Lifting, of course, has always been a great feat of strength. <laughs> Okay, well, that's all very well, but we've got something different for you. Barrels out here, and they're all full of liquid, sand, and steel shot. 150 pounds they start out, and they go right up to 275 pounds. Now, the idea is that the competitor has to lift the barrel above his head, lock the elbows, two seconds, and then, if he manages that, on to the next barrel. Barbara. Barbara. Mars. Well done. <laughs> Nothing to it. <laughs> All right, let's do it now for real with the eight competitors all trying to be Britain's strongest man. Tosha Killingback starting off here. He won a barrel lifting contest in his local pub, but he's having trouble at our first weight, 150 pounds. No, he's out. Everyone else managed the 150, but we rejoin it with the barrel of the 175. Now, Ray Noble is used to this sort of weight, silver medalist at last year's World Powerlifting Championships. And no trouble there at all. And the others also managed that weight. So Tosha out, but it's now Jim Whitehead at 200. And he and three other hammer throwers once lifted a Volkswagen Golf on their shoulders. And he's having problems here. That's as far as he gets. Not very pleased. So there's six competitors left, and we rejoin it now at 250 pounds. Bill Anderson, recognized number one at the Highland Games, professional for 23 years, British champion 10 times. Ready? One, two, down. And safely through. Hello, Scott Grant there, approving of that. Well, now Pat Rich, here of the wrestling ring. Popular film on television and in films. Very difficult to handle. Capes, though, still not getting down to the eight inch gap. That's probably because of the springiness in the steel. Still not there. But all the other competitors having problems as well. 
Anyway, Capes leads easily with the ends of his bar 12 and 3 eighths of an inch apart. Grant Anderson next at 48 and an eighth. And the others over 50. Now on to group two. Snowbilly, Bill Anderson, Whitehead and Killingback. It's 5 eighths of an inch. Put it where you want it. Wait for the word. And they've got to get 12 and 3 eighths Eight. inches apart because that's what Capes managed. And this group, again, not finding it easy. Bill Anderson changing his technique a little. Jim Whitehead as well, not making much impression on that bar. And Tosha probably wishing he was back lorry driving again, straining at the bit. Strength of the par lifter, Ray Nobley, not managing it either. Lots of trouble there. And you can hear Jeff Capes giving advice to his fellow international athlete, Jim Whitehead. One final effort for these men. The time slipping away. Twelve inches they need to get that far down to. And they've run out of time. Whitehead, a quarter of an inch inside 50. Bill Anderson, 50 exactly. The others, well over. They all found it too hot to handle. What was the problem there? Was there any... What was the main problem that you were finding there? Bending the bar. Well, no, besides <laughs> the method yeah, that you had to use. It's very difficult to hold it in the right place. If you're not careful, it's going to slip and you scalp yourself. In fact, the technique, I think, was to get your head back and push it down and inwards. If you got it across your neck, you had no chance. Yeah. So Jeff Capes wins again with a three-foot better bend, that is, than Grant Anderson. Jim Whitehead third, Bill Anderson fourth, and one point to Andy Drivetsky. So then, maximum points for Capes after two events, Bill and Grant Anderson second and third, and apart from the event prize money, 500 pounds awaits the overall winner with 250 for second and 150 for third. For my next trick, yes, we're going to be in the brick mood. Off you go. Lift it up to chest height, that's it. Good girl. The, <laughs> the record, the record is in fact 14 bricks in a line up to chest. 14? 14, yes. Wow. And you hold it for two seconds. We're going to start the competitors off with six bricks. All right. So join us after the brick, uh, the, the brick. <laughs> Welcome back to Britain's Strongest Man. Almost three tons. Time very important here. Come on, Jim! Hit him with it! Jimmy, go! Come on! Two feet! And he manages to break two minutes. <laughs> what was that experience like, Jim? Uh, do you really want an answer for that? <laughs> Tosha killing back now. Now last year for a bet, he pulled a three-ton truck a mile and half an hour. But he can't budge this one very far, and eventually, like Ray Nobley and Andy Dubietsky, he runs out of time. They're the three lightest men in the contest, so it's not surprising, really. Pat Roach is our next competitor. And he's on his way. Easy, they call it. He is overstatements, I think. His shoes seem to be coming off his feet there. I mean, that, that surely isn't intentional. Yes, they've gone. Maybe he thinks he'll get a better grip now with bare feet. He's going well now. And well inside the tie. And you can see that finishing line just in front of him. A few more yards to go. And vital points here, hopefully, for Pat Roach. And he's made it, yes. Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> it's very hard, actually. You pulled my shoes off, didn't you? What, what, you? You thought that was going to give you more momentum? No, they came off. Oh, did they? Yeah. They just turned off as I was pulling. Yeah. That's how much pressure. There's a tripping amount of pressure on that damn thing. On your so 146 there. That's faster than Whitehead. But Grant has already done 140. And it's Bill Anderson now. 140 seconds to beat. And he's 
almost breaking into a trot. And remember, they're going up a gradient, 100 feet course. 41 years of age, Bill, and keeping that steady, even pace. It's almost accelerating at this point. It's a very fast time indeed. That, Bill, was, was 34 seconds faster than anybody else up to now. Ah. <laughs> Do you make a hot habit of doing this sort of thing? The first time we've ever done it. You're going there very, very fastly indeed. Bill. First time. What do you, how do you feel at the end of the first day? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. You've had a couple of seconds. Do you feel that you could win this one? Don't think so. Well, we'll see what Jeff Capes does in a moment. Thank you, Bill. That's right. <laughs> yes, Jeff Capes on the line. Man fighting to keep an unbeaten record in our first week of this three-week competition. And now standing near him, that friend from the athletic world, Jim Whitehead, giving advice as always. But Jeff knows where he's heading. Doesn't really need any help at all. Forget about petrol and oil. This is the, the one-man answer to the energy crisis. And at this rate, he could very well break a minute. Grunts and the groans and the crowd pushing him on. Jim Whitehead yelling at him there. And that finishing line getting close. What a remarkable day, Jeff. Four events out of four. Four wins. Was that the toughest? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you ask a silly question, you know. <laughs> Two and three-quarter tons he's just pulled. Oh, dear. Have I got legs? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Ten points for Capes. Seven to Bill Anderson, four to Grant Anderson, two for Pat Roach, and one to Jim Whitehead. And they were hard-earned points. So Jeff finishes our first week with 40 points. Bill Anderson second with 21 and a half. Grant third with 12 and three-quarters. A big lead, but there could be some surprises in store. And that's really all we've got strength for this week. Four more heats next week. I hope you'll join us for that at the same time. And just a sample of what you can expect. and welcome to Woking Leisure Centre here in the heart of Surrey to the second of three heats to find Britain's strongest man. Well, if you were watching last week's programme, you'll know our eight competitors, but let's reintroduce them now. And the, the dead weight is a 711 pounds. Well, they must be. I wonder how close we are to that now, but uh, well, good luck. Over what? We're over that. Because uh, in the deadlift, it's from the floor, the lift, whereas you've got suspension here, giving you a rise of four inches, therefore making the lift e easier, you know. OK, well, we'll see what happens to you and your competitor in the next round. Thank you. And the car's now loaded to 744 pounds. Easy! Easy, he said. Well, let's see whether it is or not. OK, mate. Yep. Right! Up. It is indeed. We make that look very simple. <laughs> Now Dribietsky again, and he and Nobili are amateurs, so remember their prize money will go to the British Amateur Weightlifting Association. Hello. And Andy takes that straight up. Hello. And he seems to have improved his dropping technique as well. Looking at his hand, though. I wonder if he's hurt. Perhaps not. 
Well, another 44 pounds is loaded now into the back of that car. So remember that 788 pounds, equal to three fully loaded big kitchen freezers. The tension rising between this pair of competitors from different branches of the same sport. We're going now into the fifth round, then, of the competition. And nobly, he'll be first. It's a deadlifter, as we might just have the edge here. Again, he makes that look as easy as lifting a chair. He's feeling his ankle. I hope there's no problem there. We'll wait and see. Arching his back, it'll be a shame if an injury caused this contest to miss out. Might have ripped the muscles just up the back. You think you may have done a muscle in? Yeah, I'm a, my hand's beginning to split there, as you see. Yeah, that's a worry. Do you think you'll go on and do the next one? We'll see, huh? Another 44 pounds now in that boot. 832 pounds. That's nearly seven and a half hundred weight. Does it, but the weight there beginning to tell, we think. He looks very happy about it, and no wonder. Here comes Trivietsky. Will he go on? He won't, he said to Oscar, he's retiring. So nobody wins. Jeff Cake's monopoly broken at last. You think you could have gone on? Yeah, I know 10 kilos, maybe 20 pounds, but. That one was hot. Very hot. I gather that people like yourself, you start to shout, and when you start to shout, you're beginning to feel the weight. Well, <coughs> it's really control of the, the adrenaline. The shouting helps me to get the adrenaline going through the body. I get angry at the bar, and that helps me lift it. But the, 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 the louder you shout, the, 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 the more it's, it's beginning to tell, is it, the weight? Yes, yes, yes. It's getting harder. Well, well done. The first first blood, then, to a weightlifter in Britain's strongest man. Well done. Thanks, Ray Doberley. Ten points then to Ray and seven to Andy. Jim Whitehead, Bill Anderson and Jeff Tapes sharing third place with two and the third points, leaving nobly in third place overall. Well, this is the cue for the next event. Directory tearing, in this case an E2K directory from London. Well, this is how someone else did it. Do it. All right, off you go, then. Oh, dear. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, you see? Thank you, Barbara. Enthusiasm. It's all right, seriously, we've got a competition in hands now. We'll leave Barbara to her own devices. And let's go to the table. Seven fellows await. They've got these directories to tear right in half, as many as they can in one minute, starting... Now, yes, seven lining up because Grant Anderson is still a non-starter here. And the paper, as you can see, beginning to fly in all directions. Interesting to watch their different techniques. Ray showing a deft touch. Tosha not so happy. Andy doing pretty well there, Jim. He's having some trouble. Still struggling. Pat's getting in a bit of a twist too. And Andy tearing those rather easily. Tom. Ray's having no bother at all. And Andy taking them in stages. Well, it's one way. Jim, though, is in real trouble. But Pat, I think he's got the neck now. I remember there's a time limit here, and time's now running out. And those hands must be sore. Well, that's it. And uh, the way I'm torn directly is applying. I don't envy the judges. A fun event, though. And as they sort it out, the score nobly 16 directories.
That's two ahead of Bill Anderson Dribiecki with 14. Capes and Whitehead on 11. Oh. Killing back and Roach on seven. So another 10 points to Nobley. Five and a half each for Bill Anderson and Dribiecki. One and a half for Jeff Capes and Jim Whitehead. And if we put those points now onto the main scoreboard, we'll find that while Jeff Capes leads, Anderson and Nobley getting closer. Well, now for something even more tiring, we're going to be doing it with these. Oh, Derek, I do feel tired. <laughs> <laughs> do you know that we're going to have to throw these tires? Throw them? Here, wouldn't it be easy if we just bowled them? Uh, do join us after the break when we'll be seeing how strong men coping with the tires. Are you radial or cross ply a retread, Bob? here from Woking to find Britain's strongest man and straight away it's into tire tossing. Now we've had some preliminary heats for this and five men have got through to the final. They are Grant Anderson and Bill Anderson. We've got the wrestler Big Pat Roach and then the two members of the British Athletics team Jeff Capes and Jim Whitehead. They're through then to the final. They have two more throws. Let's see what they've got to do. With Grant Anderson, the two big men. Capes making the early running in this interesting race. And indeed, he seems to be winning that fairly easily, yes. Our wall not enjoying the impact. Now on to heat two, and it's Trubietsky on the left, killing back on the right. And Andy getting well away there. Tosha trailing again. He's finding this much too much for him. A good win for the weightlifter. Heat three, and Ray Nobley and Pat Roach. Remember, they're pushing well over 700 weight here. Pat seems to be hobbling a bit. Ray winning, but where's that barrel? And welcome once again to the Woking Leisure Centre for the third of our three-part series to find Britain's strongest man. And here are the eight competitors. Lorry driver, Tosha Killingback. All-in wrestler, Big Pat Roach. Highland Games professional, Grant Anderson. Champion weightlifter, Andy Dravietsky. Hammer thrower, Jim Whitehead. Champion powerlifter, Ray Nobley. Veteran of the field, Bill Anderson. And hefty shot-putting ace, Jeff Capes. Those are the eight fellas taking part. And here's the latest points table to just show you what's happening in the contest. ...lead nearly 30 points ahead of Highland Games champion Bill Anderson, Ray Nobley just five further behind in third place. Just in case you don't know what the scoring system is, it's 10 points for the winner of each event, seven for second, four for third, two for fourth, and one for fifth. And at the very end of this part of the show, we'll have that tug of war, which will be worth double the points. That's the way it is then, as I welcome now, for the third time, my charming assistant, who knows all about muscles, Barbara Windsor. Hello, Jerry. Hello. Yes. Well, I'll tell you anyway, you know, two weeks we've had with all these eight strong men. You must mm. know by now how they tick. <laughs> no idea, no, no. But you see that tall, dark one over there with the big petrol? I thought, yeah. I'm going to go and ask him. OK, all see right. you later. Okay. <laughs> all right, Barbara. We'll see what she's up to in a moment. But uh, meanwhile, let's prepare ourselves for the next feat of strength. It's taking ten men all their time and effort to lift this massive purpose-built beam. It's made out of tubular steel filled with concrete. It's for the girl lift. As in all the other events, 100 pounds to the winner, 75 second, 50 for third. Here, tell me something, Jim. Were, were you ever a seven-stone weakling? Well, according to my mum, I was the day I was born. Ah, oh, I bet you were lovely then, weren't you? Yeah, Here, but... do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? No, but uh, I can't talk to you down there. Come on, no. let's... Oh, oh, I think my luck's changed. <laughs> <laughs> Here, what do you have to do to get all those muscles? Well, uh, yeah, it took a long time to develop, but just like you, Barbara, they grew and they grew and they grew. <laughs> I know what he means. Anyway, before the competition gets going now, Circus Strongman Gunga Din. He's about to try giving seven of these fellas a boost. His beam weighs just eight stone, but our gladiators add another 134 stone to that weight, nearly 1,800 weight in all. Making a slight adjustment here, I see. 
know what that's going to do to help, but we'll find out. This is something that Gunga Din does in his circus act that usually brings the house down, so to speak. Now this is going to be a foot lift. Not as tough, uh, Oscar Status shows us, as uh, the event we have in store, but still a tremendous feat if he manages it. They're taking the supports away, and he really has done it, yes. One way of doing it, many thanks to you, Gunga Din. But for our competitors, this is the beam that they're thinking about for our next feat of strength. 1,016 pounds. Or put another way, that's half a ton. And they've got to raise this beam up, and when they manage to do that, well then we'll increase the weight by adding these lovely ladies behind me here, just to make it that little bit more difficult. Now when both ends clear those supports, these lights should come on, and we've got officials in place just in case they don't. The time limit for each lift, one minute. So we join the competition with six girls now on the beam. That's 1,500 weight and 28 pounds. Pat Roach not competing. Everyone else, though, is in the round. Tosha killing back, trying. Getting that bit of helping hand there, but still nonetheless in trouble. It's a heck of a weight, this. And in fact, Tosha decides to retire. So uh, we're going to move on now to round four. Eight girls, 1,700 weight, 54 pounds. That's the weight to hoist, and it's Jeff Capes. Now we've got a light failure on the right, but it's nonetheless a good lift from the Commonwealth Shot Put champion, despite that bit of light problem. And next to go, Jim Whitehead. And he teaches physical education at Rawlings Community College in Leicestershire. A sympathetic look there from Tosha, but Jim nonetheless, I think, is struggling here. And the time limit has beaten him, yes. He didn't manage it, but pretty good nonetheless. Five men now left in the competition. And the next to go, the 22-stone town planner from Dundee. The big man is successful in the Highland Games. And he's done it, no problem, despite that elbow of his. It was causing problems last time we saw him. Now to Bill Anderson. Now, even though we've got one light on there, it isn't a light failure that beats him. Just the weight. And it's Andy Drivietsky. He teaches part-time to leave himself free to train for weightlifting, and he looks confident here. A light failure, but it doesn't matter. It's a good lift. Our two judges at either end of the beam say so. Now, Ray Nobley. He's using the belt. Gets a good luck pat there to help him along. Only five foot six inches, but all that massive muscle. And there's no doubt about that one. Yes, it's a good one. So Ray with Kate, Trubietsky and Grant Anderson are in with a really good chance here. Four of you got through that one. Do you think you could you can lift the next one? We work it out, it's about 24 pounds off a ton. Well, what's wrong is my arm's beginning to hurt, so I don't know. If it, if it begins to hurt, I won't do it. Capes, then, first to go here. Ten girls on the beam this time, and that's like two grand pianos. <laughs> Nearly there, and all the competitors helping them along. But he's not doing it. He's gone out of time, yes. A very disappointed man there. That's his second failure today, and he doesn't like it at all. Jeff Capes. Well, now on to Grant Anderson. It's a big test for him. Will that elbow of his stand up here?
No, even with 30 seconds to go, the elbow has beaten him. So, as in the car lift last week, we're down to the weightlifters, Andy Drivetsky and Ray Noble. Ready? Oh. Do you think you're going to manage this one at all? Well, I'm going to have a good attempt at it anyway, you know, but it's, uh, it's looking pretty heavy. Well, it's Andy now under the beam. A lot of weight here. One light up, but no, it doesn't seem to be there yet. All that concentration. No, the time's up. And with him in this heat, Jim Whitehead and Andy Drivetsky. And Drivetsky well away. It's going to be a one-man race, surely. Andy winning that in 5.3, and easily that's the fastest time. The others both clocking sixes, so it means all three will make the final with Grant Anderson. Getting loaded up again. Capes helping his teammate, Whitehead. So from the left, we're about to see our competitors here. Bill Anderson, Grant Anderson, Whitehead, and the favorite, Drivetsky. Andy's well away here with Jim Whitehead, but he's down, yes, and it's going to be Whitehead who will win this one in 5.5 seconds on our watch, edging Grant out of second place. Well, there's commiserations here for Andy Shirley, but he seems to have had an injury. Let's see what happened uh, in slow motion. Drivetsky was pulled down hard by that sack as he lost his balance. Anyway, it's 10 points for Jim Whitehead, 7 for Bill Anderson, 4 to Grant, and 2 to Drivetsky. Well, now let's have a look at the situation after 11 grueling events and at the four men who lead the field. Jeff Capes on questionably first, second Bill Anderson, third Ray Nobley, and fourth Jim Whitehead qualifying for the tug of war where the points now are doubled. Now, the leader at the moment, Jeff Capes, will take on the third place to, of our four contestants. That's Ray Nobley. And at present, the runner-up, who's Bill Anderson, will be uh, competing against Jim Whitehead. These are the first round pools, and the two losers will then tug for third and fourth places, the winners for first and second. And Jeff making it look very easy. Just four seconds, and it's not a popular win, but then with 23 stone against 16, what can you expect? Now to Jim Whitehead, up against Bill Anderson. Only a stone of a difference here. Jim on 18 stone, Bill on 19. And the lighter Whitehead pulling, making the pace. Anderson dangerously near that line, but pulling back, fighting back now. Whitehead again, tugging forward. But Bill Anderson, the tough Scott, won't give up. His extra pounds may begin to tell here, even though he's 41, 12 years the older. It's a tremendous struggle. First one way, then the other. Whitehead slipping and recovering. Anderson... Is he getting the edge? He is. Whitehead's gone towards the line, it's all over. 45 seconds, so it's Nobley and Whitehead to pull the third and fourth places in this tug of war. Two stone of a difference here. Whitehead the heavier. And the weight tells. It uh, takes just six seconds for Whitehead to win. The crowd on Ray's side. Going for the underdog, after all. He only weighs in at 16. Well, now we go to the climax here, the pull-off for first and second places. And it's Jeff Capes and Bill Anderson already sure in the overall competition of those positions. Capes, 23 stone, Anderson, 19. And we wonder how much that effort against Whitehead has taken out on Bill. And it seems 
a heck of a look. Just a few seconds and it's over, and Cake swims again as he's done in seven other events. lesson for anybody here? I mean, a few people probably haven't got the weightlifting training that, that's required to help them out. What sort of overall things do you need for a contest like this? Strength, speed, stamina, suppleness, and skill. Have you forgot one other thing, competitiveness. You're a very important competitor. You, you really compete all the time. Yeah, um, I think, obviously, competitiveness helps. And I think if you control emotion and channel aggression into what you're doing, you'll ultimately become a winner. Okay, well, well done to Jeff Capes, Britain's strongest man, Jeff Capes! <laughs> and the final result, Capes, 98.16 points and over 1,500 pounds to his club. Bill Anderson, 58.83 and just under a 1,000. Jim Whitehead, 44.33 and nearly 800 pounds. Jeff, here are darling. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Here's a kiss. Okay. And a very happy Kate holding aloft his Waterford Crystal Glass trophy. We say goodbye. Our thanks to Barbara. Well done to Jeff Cates. And thanks to all the people here at the Working Leisure Centre. We say goodbye and leave you with the way that Jeff Capes became Britain's strongest man. Goodbye. A date with Glamour next on STV, so stay with us for Charlie's Angels. Sit down, Earl. All right, let's begin at the beginning. We had a tap on this fellow Muller, Commissioner. George Muller. That was in connection with your investigation of Sergeant Schaefer? Yes, sir, that's correct. Muller has this bar and grill over in the 18th Precinct. We received a tip that known prostitutes were frequenting the place. Certain well-known, suspicious characters who prefer not to be seen together in public often met there. Well, the tapped phone was in the pay booth of a garage Muller had an interest in. And there were different kinds of conversations on the tapes. While I was running through them, I, I heard this voice. 